Here's an example of beta decay. This is the same one we saw before, but it got written in the opposite order, okay? So we said if we had carbon 14, so see if I name it that way, if I say carbon 14, I'm telling you carbon, you can go look up that it's element six. 14 tells you the total mass. It will decay into a beta particle. There's the beta particle, negative charge because it's actually an electron, but it's very light, so no mass. And when you do this, six equals seven minus one. 14 equals 14 plus zero. And so you're looking up number seven, you say, oh, that's nitrogen, and then you write this out. So this is an example of beta decay. Well, when did this happen? You're more likely to get beta decay when it's neutron rich. And this was 14 divided by six was more than the one to one ratio we were expecting. So that's why we said, well, maybe it's a beta decay. Let's give that a try and see if it makes sense. And of course you go do it in the lab and find out whether it's true. An alpha decay, now notice here, they're going to a much heavier situation. These are huge, right? <laughs> so an alpha decay is another situation where an unstable nuclide spontaneously falls apart. And when it does, it falls apart into two parts, an alpha particle and a new element. When you have very massive nuclides, that's when you're most likely to see the alpha and beta decay. And that's also why you see these names of alpha and beta because it was when they first started finding about, out about the very, very heavy uh, elements that they were working on trying to figure out what was going on and what the radiation was. And that's why these first ones got named the way they did. And the others got named later and didn't get the, the cute little um, Greek symbols. But you know, this is like Marie Curie worked on these things. So they were using very heavy elements. And so they were always observing alpha and beta decay. So what is an alpha particle? Well, I said before, it was a, an, a helium, a naked helium. So it has two protons and two neutrons, a helium nucleus, essentially. And here is an example. Here's the uranium-238. Uranium is element number 92. And we find out that well, okay, it says here, this is what gave us the alpha particles for Rutherford's gold foil experiment, if you'll remember that from Chem 2. So if these alpha particles are coming off, you know what their numbers are, two and four, right? And I have the same thing. I'm like, well, 92 equals two plus what? Well, 90. 238 equals four plus 234. Then I go and I look up element number 90 and I find out it's thorium and I fill it in. 